What we're going to be going over here are stock appreciation rights or what they call SARS and that's a share based liability that we're going to look at here for the company. And the, this is where the holder receives a cash payment but not any additional stock based on this uh, compensation plan here. So for example here, Corporation A issues 240,000 stock appreciation rights here uh, called SARS here to its officers. So point one here, they would receive cash for the difference between the market price of its stock and a pre-established price here of ten dollars per share and two the service period here is for four years and the exercise period is for seven years so the uh, officers have up to uh, seven years to exercise these rights but the uh, service period that they have to perform here is for four years. Now the fair value of our SARS that's really the difference between the market price and the pre-established price here of ten dollars per share and it's estimated at the end of each year here and we're just showing here 20x1 we had four dollars a SAR and 20x2 one dollar 20x3 eleven dollars and 20x4 nine dollars. So what this is is a stock based compensation plan is that the officers aren't going to receive any stock but they're going to receive a cash payment here based on the value of the stock uh, over the uh, service period that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so let's go and let's look at our problem here that we have to deal with here. So this is where we're going to have to, deter based on our stock appreciation rights here, we're going to have to calculate the compensation expense. So I've got it laid out in a table here and we're going to go through this table. There's a lot of numbers here, but what we want to get down to is we have to determine the expense on a yearly basis for this compensation stock compensation or this compensation plan here based it's stock based and you're going to be getting cash compensation here but um, what we have to determine is the expense on a yearly basis here and we're going to have four years to deal with here years 20x1 through 20x4 so what we do here and I'll lay out this table here at the end of each year here I'm going to have the dates here for it, the 1231x1 here through 1231x4 and what we have here is we have the fair value of those SARS here and uh, shown uh, we mentioned earlier here year x1 four dollars here through year x4 nine dollars here for a value of a SAR. Now what we have to do here is we have to first off let's look at it on a column by column uh, basis here. So we have to determine the cumulative compensation uh, that is recognizable on a yearly basis here and that's taking no more than in this case we had those 240,000 SARS times the fair value of each SAR here. So for the end of year X1 here, $4 of fair value of the SAR here times 240,000 SARs or um, stock appreciation rights here and that would equal 960,000. Simply 4 times 240,000, 960,000. And then for the next uh, year X2 here, it's the value of SAR is $1, so 240,000 times that equals 240,000 here and then for year X3 value of a uh, fair value of the SAR here is $11 times 240,000 stars SARS here so you get 2,640,000 and then year uh, year X4 here the end of year X4 uh, value of the SAR $9 times again 240,000 SARS for 2,160,000 uh, here dollars here now let's move over to our service period here now this is where we have to accrue uh, our uh, service our expense here and we do it based on allocating uh, it over four years here. Our service period was four years here and we have to establish our percent percentage on a yearly basis. So four years if we got a hundred percent well we get 25 percent per year here. So for the first year we'd have 25 percent, second year here 50 percent and so on. Third year 75 percent until we get down to our fourth year we'd have total hundred percent. Okay, so now let's look at, next thing we have to do is calculate our cumulative compensation here as I, I got it classified here to date. So what we would do here on a yearly, at the end of each year here, we take that uh, compensation that's recognizable here, in, in this case it was 960,000 times that percentage that we're accruing here, 25% per year. So 25% times that, we're going to get uh, our cumulative compensation here of two hundred and forty thousand dollars here and then just let's just go down and finish off those years here so for the second year we're taking two hundred forty thousand times fifty percent 
for 120,000 here. And then third year here, 2,640,000 times the 75% for 1,960,000. And then our last year here, year four, taking 2,160,000 times 100% is going to give us 2,160,000. So what we're doing here is we're trying to get this expense on a yearly basis. And then we have to do, go through that arithmetic, allocating it here evenly over those four years at 25% per year. Okay, so now let's, here's how we go about calculating that yearly expense here. So for the first year, it's pretty simple here. All we did is we take in 25, well, our compensation expense here was 240,000, the 25% here of that uh, recognizable amount here for the first year. For year 20x1, we have 240,000. Now for 20x2, it becomes a little bit more complicated here. What we have to do is we have to take the, um, what we've accrued here, that 50% uh, uh, times 240,000 here, that 120,000 here. So, what we have to do, we have to get down to 120,000 here. And we started out at 240,000 here for 20x1. So to get down to the 120,000 here at the end of year x2, well, we would have to subtract or reduce our uh, it by 120,000 here. So that would be our yearly expense here for 20x2. It's actually a reduction in the compensation expense here of 120,000. So we got down here to the end of year x2 here at 120,000. Now for year x3 here, well, we have to get up to 1,960,000 here. And we start out at 120,000. So for year 20x3 here, we'd have to add in 1,860,000 to the 120,000 to get up to 960,000 here. So this is what we would recognize as our yearly expense here, this compensation expense uh, for 20x3 here, the 1,860,000, whatever we needed to get up to the um, uh, amount here of 1,960,000. And then for the last year, doing the same thing here. We had 2,160,000 here, and we started out with 1,960,000 here. So we have to add uh, 180,000 to this to get to the of what the amount we need here at the end of year X for 2,160,000. So for ex year, the expense here for 20 X4 is really that incremental amount here that we have to get up to 180,000. Okay, so we've done this. We've calculated our yearly expense here for years 20 X1 through 20 X4. Now let's go and let's look at how to record this here. And I'm going to start out with, we've got these accounts here. We're going to have a liability account here for our stock appreciation plan. That's a liability on our balance sheet here. And then we're going to have this expense account here on our income statement. I call compensation expense here for those stock appreciate for the stock appreciation plan. And then finally we're going to have some cash payments here for the stock appreciation plan. So let's start out with this compensation expense and work back backwards here. So what we've calculated as an expense up here, we'd recognize here on our income statement as expense. So we would, for that first year, debit that here for 240,000 here, year X, 20X1. And then 20X2, well, let's just go back. We reduced our expense here uh, by 120,000. So we credit or reduce our expense here by 120,000. And then going for 20X3 and 20X4. 20X3, we had at 1,860,000 and then 20x4 we had 180,000 so we debit or increase our compensation expense by those amounts down here for 20x3 and 20x4 again that's our compensation expense on our income statement now all we need is a balancing entry and we to our debits and our credit and our to our compensation expense so this is where we set up that liability account here on our balance sheet here for those stock up the stock appreciation plan and that's what it would be titled and it's a liability here so all we doing is we're looking for a balancing amount here between our debits and credits here as our compensation expense here so for year 20x1 we had a debit here 240,000 so we'd credit or increase our liability here by 240,000. And then for 20X2, well, we had a reduction in our expense here. So of 120,000, 
deb a credit here so we debit our stock appreciation for 120,000 and then 20x3 and 20x4 here so 20x3 we had a debit or an increase in our compensation expense 1,860,000 so we would credit or increase our liability here by 108 one million eight hundred sixty thousand and twenty x four same thing we had a debit or increase here in our comp uh, recognizes our compensation expense of one hundred eighty thousand here so we credit or increase our liability here by one hundred eighty thousand here for this uh, for our stock appreciate our liability here for the stock appreciation plan and then so that was our stock appreciation plan liability here so now let's just say at the end of the fourth year here all these SARS were exercised here so what we would do is that's really this amount up here that one million or two million one hundred sixty thousand we go back to our chart here that's the hundred percent amount here that we have and that is what we what what was exercised here at nine dollars per uh, SAR that was the fair value of nine dollars per SAR and we had two hundred and forty thousand of those SARS outstanding and all of them were exercised so what we would do here in that case here again that uh, we would go down here and we're going to um, reduce our credit or reduce our cash by that amount here two million one hundred sixty thousand again nine dollars nine dollars per SAR here two hundred forty thousand all exercised here at that's at the end of year at twelve thirty one x four here so we would credit or reduce our cash by that amount and then our liability account here for that stock appreciation plan we debit or reduce that here by two million one hundred sixty thousand so here our credit reduction to cash debit reduction to our liability so we've reduced our liability at that point by the payout of cash again this um, SAR here that's really the market price for the uh, stock of the company less that pre-established price so let's just say for our last entry here that nine dollar value that that would say our market price was nineteen dollars per share here less the pre-established price of ten dollars per share and then one last thing here we were given a um, service period here of four years, but they could exercise it up to seven years here. So had they not, had the executives not ex exercise all these stocks here, um, we would, this is what we would do here. So if the SARS were not exercised at the end of the fourth year, that was the service period, we'd adjust the compensation expense whenever there is a change in the market price, four to six subsequent reporting periods until the rights are exercised or these rights expire so we'd really go back up to that chart here and we'd have to extend that on into the future here based on that fair value of those SARS we'd have to establish and then go from there okay so let's just go back up here one more time here so when we went let's just go through our chart here one more time so remember we had to determine our yearly expense for this uh, compensation expense based on those stock appreciation rights. So what we had to do is we had to determine we were given actually the fair value for each of those stock appreciation rights when we're also given the number of uh, shares or stock appreciations that were sitting out here so we could determine the recognizable amount simply by taking the fair value of those stars times the number of stars outstanding and then this compensate recognizable compensation here we alloc have to allocate it evenly over the four uh, the service period which was four years so that was 25 percent over each of the years here so you can see here they they build on each other here we started out with 25 percent times that recognizable amount here and then we 50 for that was for the first year end of the second year here 50 percent of that and then so on down the deal here and then to determine the compensation expense well the first year was pretty easy here we just 25 percent of the rec total recognizable amount here but that for that second year here this is where we have to determine at the end of the year here what our uh, we have to determine here uh, based on our allocation our, our crude amount here in this 50 percent times that recognizable amount here we came up with in this case it was 120,000 here but we started out for 20x1 here 240,000 so we had to get down here to 120,000 so we had to make an adjustment or a reduction to our expense here for year 20x2 and we went on down here 
for each of the next years here. 20x3, it was based on the end of x2. What we have the for our amount here uh, for the end of x2 here, year x2, and then we looked at year x3 here, and we had to come up with a balancing amount, and that was our year 20x3's expense here, and then same for year 20x4. And then just to review it one real quickly here, those expenses, we recognize here the compensation expense on the income statement each year here. And then uh, for that, we also had to set up our liability here. So our debit to our compensation expense went to a uh, balancing amount, went to a credit to our liability account here. And then at the end, when, whenever, whatever amount of these SARs that are exercised, you'd reduce your liability by the value here of that SAR at the date that it's being exercised. In this case, it was that $9 per SAR here times, and all of them were exercised, 240000 So that was the cash payout here to the ex um, executives. And for the cash payout, we reduced the liability account here for the stock appreciation plan. OK, so that'll summarize it here for our stock appreciation rights and how we recognize this compensation expense.